All right. Up next, we have Deepsha Mangani with learning to create shiny modules by turning on turning an existing app modular. Awesome. Thank you. All right. I'm going to try to be fast because Jacqueline's going to start playing Gangnam Style if I don't do this on time. So we're going to try our best. Um, so I'm Deepsha Mangani and uh, pronounce she, her. I want to make with this talk, I want to make modules less intimidating for you. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. All right. All right, it works. Um, so just to ground everybody on what Shiny is, it is a application framework to create database web applications. Uh, so on this picture, you'll see that you can select some drop-down inputs and it updates the visualization based on that. Simply, that's what Shiny applications are. If you've learned Shiny or are learning, you will notice that the first application you build is something like this. You're changing the bins, a histogram gets updated, 30 lines of code max, However, when you start building them, it gets to a thousand lines of code in no time. Like shiny apps can get long so quickly and those make Bigfoot sad because those Bigfoot size applications are hard to read and debug. And also if someone new tries to come in and read them, it's kind of mean to them. And, <laughs> and you have to copy paste things if you wanna replicate any part of the code. That's where Shiny modules come in. They're basically, think of it as if Shiny and Functions had babies, that's what Shiny modules are. So we're gonna learn how to write one and I'm gonna hold your hand through it. So be patient there. We're gonna start with this very ugly looking application, but hopefully this is just for the concept. It's a simple application that where you drop down, select the state, and you get the top 10 counties for Bigfoot sightings in that state. And on the right-hand side, you have the yearly sightings for that. Business case, I wanna know where should I move to if I'm a Bigfoot enthusiast. So <laughs> now that I have my applications, the first step to doing modules is decomposing your shiny applications into its individual components. So my three components are these three. The dropdown for state selection that filters the data, my counties plot and the code for that. And then third, my yearly sightings plot. What does that look like in the code? Before I start going through this, all the code is available in GitHub repo, so don't, you don't need to read every single line I show here. I will always point to what I want you to look at. So the three elements that we talked about, what do they look like in a shiny application that has a UI and a server component? So the first component was I'm creating a dropdown on the UI. And on the server side, I'm filtering the data. My second component is I'm creating a UI space for my county plot and my server side, I'm writing the ggplot2 code for it. And similarly for the yearly plot, the UI and the server side ggplot code for that. Now, those are the three decomposed elements. So we're gonna start creating modules or baby shiny application functions for all those three modules. Let's start with the very first one, the simple one, where you're creating a dropdown and your app gets filtered or your data gets filtered. So this is what the mod on the left-hand side is the original code that I just went through the components. And on the right-hand side is the module. And I'm gonna go over every line, don't worry about it. So what are we trying to do in the Shiny app is you has a UI and a server component. So let's talk about the similarities with the module. The module, also has a UI and server component, just like a Shiny app. The other similarity is in the UI, you give the dropdown, the dropdown code, and on the server side, you filter the data. Oop. That code is exactly the same. So let's now talk about the differences. The first difference is Shiny app is written as a UI and server, Shiny module is written as a UI function and a server function. The reason you're doing that is because you're gonna call these functions from the main application that, hey, UI module function, go create a dropdown for me instead of writing all of this code on the left-hand side. You're just gonna call that UI function. And on the server side, you're gonna say, hey, go filter the data for me using the dropdown output. The second difference I want you to think about when you're thinking modules is the ID that you give as an input in your function. Now think of ID as a blind date. So, from, from the app.r file, you say, hey, UI, go create a dropdown. UI is like, cool, I'm gonna create a state dropdown. The server side, you say, hey, go filter the data. The server is like, wait, where do I find what state was selected? The UI is like, I'm gonna be holding a red rose. You're gonna find me like that. 
the server is like, but how are you going to know that you have to give it to me? So, so it's like, I'm also going to hold a red rose. <laughs> so think of ID. That's what the goal of ID is. You're going to give it a unique ID so that the UI and server talk to each other. And you'll see that in an example in a second here. So I already not going to repeat that. The other concept I want you to think about in modules is a namespace. So just like the name suggests, it is a space for the variable names associated with that ID, which means that let's say Jacqueline and I are working on two different modules. I created a variable name called state input. Jacqueline doesn't know that, also created a state input variable in that module. So the namespace associated with the red rose ID tells me that, hey, if the server is looking for state input, take it from this UI with red rows. And even if another UI has the state input, it's not gonna create a conflict. That is what namespace does. So it's extremely important to put your variables in that namespace associated with that ID. That's it, you've created your very first module. Now let's test that module. This is a good practice to just generally do it anyway once you create modules. So we're gonna create a baby shiny application to test this module that we wrote on the right-hand side. All right, just seeing the mouse is moving there. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is you created a module app.r, you're gonna call that, you're gonna source that from your main Shiny app because all the functions are sitting in there. The next thing in your Shiny app, you have two components, UI and server. Within the UI, you're gonna call the UI module as a function this time instead of writing the dropdown code. And on the server, you're gonna call the server function. So notice that the first thing that I'm giving inside these functions is input underscore test. That's what I'm using as a unique ID that's making them talk to each other. And then your shiny app create, creation command is given, just like that your dropdown is created. Now that you have completed your first module, you've understood the concept. We're not yet there at the fun part of why modules, but we're gonna go, before we go there, we're gonna create the second and the third modules. I'm not gonna go over the code for that because the con concept is exactly the same, but this is what is going to be available. The second and the third module. So the county plot module similarly, and the yearly plot module. Now we're gonna update our original shiny app.r file to this modularized shiny app.r file. We source all the three module files we had and we call the first module. So you've got the UI for the dropdown, and you've got the data filtering on the server side, module calls. Then you will call the second and second modules, the UI for the county plot and the ggplot code for the county plot functions. And then similarly, the third. And then when you run the app.r file, this is it. This is the code for the app.r file. I can see there is a row. I can see in that row, there are three things. The first dropdown, then county plot, then yearly plot. It's easy to read. Uh, and debug. If I have, if my county plot fails, I know that I can just go to that function, debug just that part versus trying to find where is my county plot in that thousand lines of code. So much, much easier to debug. This is my shiny output, nothing changed. All I did was change the underlying code to module. Now comes my absolute favorite part about modules. Let's say Washington has a lot of smoke, so I wanna move to a different state maybe. So I wanna compare two states but let's say not just two, I wanna compare 10 states side by side as to what their yearly sightings have looked like and their count, top 10 counties. I wanna compare 10 states. What would that mean in the original format? Let's say your original app was 200 lines of code. You're gonna copy paste all the county plot code 10 times. You're gonna copy paste all the yearly plot code 10 times. Let's say you wanna change this bar color to bar plot to a dot plot, you're gonna to have to go change that in 10 places to change that Shiny application. This is where if you are using modules, you just call the first time we call the modules, we're just gonna call those modules again a second time. And note that when you call, let's say this dropdown a second time for the second state dropdown, you're gonna call the data filtering module function from on the server side, Note that it has a different ID, inputs underscore two. It knows that it is talking to the second dropdown. It's not gonna go get the data from the first dropdown. This is where IDs become very important. I have made mistakes and my data wasn't getting filtered correctly while creating this application. So yeah, take your own lesson. 
And this is what that looks like. You've got six lines of code to create this top. You've got six lines of code to create this bottom. If anything, any plot fails, all, you don't need to go figure it out at 10 places. You just go to the module and figure it out. In Crux, just to bring it home, you had, this was your original app.r file. You broke it into components. The components were different modules. And then instead of calling the code directly, you're going to call the modules from your app.r file. Bringing back the sad Bigfoot. But now Bigfoot's happy. <laughs> and the reason is all the reasons that I gave. It's easy to keep track of components. Anyone new can come in and contribute to your Shiny application because it's easy to read. You can have different people work on different modules um, at the same time. It's not going to conflict as long as you're following the principles of ID and namespace and the element usability. You can package your modules and use across multiple Shiny applications. Next steps, if you're new to Shiny, I recommend using the modular approach. Um, I learned Shiny the monolith way and that's okay too, if that's how you learn. But then some time ago, I realized that modules has been there for 25 years or something like that and I just didn't know about it so I learned by creating and turning an existing app modular so that's a great way to practice if you've learned it one way there's a mastering shiny book by Hadley Wickham also like all their books it's amazing and all the code that I shared today is in the github repo it has an app modular app non-modular both the files create the same shiny application that you can compare and contrast um, that's it Thank <laughs> you.